In the previous part, the alliance of two forces, the Falmouth Nation and the Western Holy Church, with the intention of invading the Tempest Kingdom, were defeated by Rimuru, where Rimuru also awakened as a demon lord. After that, Rimuru summoned the great demon Diablo and gave him a name. This guy is a very powerful noble demon. After that, King Gazel of Dwargan and Duke Arald of the The Lion Dynasty, along with Fuse of the Blumen Kingdom, came to Tempest for negotiations. They are the first allies of Tempest. At that time, Rimuru completed the analysis of the Eternal Cage and released Veldora. After Rimuru sincerely shared everything, even letting them know that he is a reincarnated person, the The Lion Witch Kingdom decided to officially form a friendly alliance with Tempest. This is a very important diplomatic victory, knowing that the Lion is a large country with high military power in the world. Just then, the Spirit Queen Lamrys arrived and warned them that Tempest was about to be destroyed, causing everyone to be horrified. Rimuru had to attend the Demon Lord's banquet called Valporgus to decide his fate and the entire Tempest nation. According to Lamrys, the main purpose of this time is that the Demon Lords will punish Rimuru for daring to call himself a Demon Lord. In fact, behind this is Clayman, he is also a Demon Lord, and this guy is very cunning, secretly controlling Malim to attack Demon Lord Carrion, Carrion lost, and his country was also destroyed. At this time in a meeting, Rimuru, with the help of wise intelligence, understood Clayman's ultimate goal, he did not want to occupy Tempest at all, on the contrary, he was only aiming at the beast country Carrion. The main purpose is to massacre enough numbers to evolve into a true demon lord. After that, Rimuru went to the Valporgus Conference, where Rimuru met demon lord Leon, who had harmed Shizu, a girl who reincarnated like him. Rimuru just wanted to punch Leon, unfortunately, he could not do it. Clayman appeared and began to expose Rimuru's crimes, saying that Rimuru had conspired with demon lord Carrion, killed the army of the Falmouth Kingdom, while Clayman's army was crushed by Tempest on all fronts, even their headquarters were destroyed by the Princess of Tempest. Unfortunately, Clayman's lies were exposed by Rimuru with evidence and exposed all his evil schemes. Clayman was furious, still insisting on standing up and demanding everyone to punish Rimuru. He said that those evidences were fabricated. At this point, the demon lord Guy Crimson began to speak, saying that to prove who is right, just fight, whoever wins is right. It should be known that this guy is the first demon lord among the ancient demon lords and also the first one to be born by the great Holy Spirit of Darkness in the Seven Colored Water Ancestors with the nickname Rouge of the Red Water Ancestor. So he is extremely strong, and also the most vocal here. Then the battle broke out, Malim attacked Rimuru, Cheyenne fought with Clayman's puppet, Rimuru's wolf fought with Clayman's fox demon. Just like that everyone was busy fighting, only Clayman was sitting and drinking water. In the hottest moment, Rimuru seemed about to be punched to death by Malim. Then suddenly Veldora appeared, Yes, it was the storm dragon Veldora. He roared without understanding anything. It turns out that because he hadn't read the last volume of this manga, he rushed here to demand Rimuru. Even thought this best friend came to save him. Damn it. After that, with the help of Veldora, Clayman's subordinates were all successively destroyed. Even Clayman was not Shine's opponent. He was beaten by her like a dog. Veldora fought with Malim, but Veldora just sneakily launched a few new experimental moves like Kamakamiha. Knowing that he was about to lose, Clayman ordered Malim to perform the ultimate technique, Stampede to destroy everything. But unexpectedly, Malim turned around and said that she would not listen to him anymore. Damn, it turns out that Clayman has been deceived for so long. Malim was not puppeteered by him at all. Rimuru was also shocked. No wonder the wise intelligence could not dispel the spell on her. It turns out that Fry and Malim had pretended to stand on Clayman's side from the beginning to expose him. Then Cheyenne cut Clayman into many pieces, fell into a dead end. Unexpectedly Clayman burst out with power and awakened as a true demon lord. But it was still useless, damn. Still got punched by Rimuru. Finally used gluttonous King Beelzebub to completely absorb him. Before this absolute power performance, Rimuru was officially recognized as a demon lord. No one objected. Fry and Carrion returned to the position of Demon Lord, but both of them submitted to Malim. Under the situation of only eight Demon Lords instead of ten, Rimuru came up with a replacement name for this conference, which is Octogram, meaning Eight Star King. Everyone agreed because this name is too beautiful, too classy. Then Guy hosted a feast for everyone. Leon and Demon Lord Valentine immediately left. After tasting a piece of pork that was too delicious compared to the norm, Rimuru immediately ordered the Wisdom King Raphael to research the recipe. 
Malim also ate heartily, losing all her image, even grabbing a glass of wine despite Rimuru's prevention. Guy tasted the wine and praised it. He said that this brandy was very delicious. Was it made from grapes of the Eurasania region? Of course, this wine was brewed by Tempest, irresistibly delicious. Everyone regretted for Valentine because he left too early and did not get to enjoy this high-quality wine. Returning to Tempest, the vibrant and joyful life returned to this land. Everyone was as happy as a flower. When Rimuru returned, all the people knelt down neatly, greeting the king of this land with full respect. Diablo also rushed out and released a series of the most flattering words. Then everyone went to the room and enjoyed the green tea pudding made by a goblin girl. To repay for providing information, Diablo gave his portion of the cake to Veldora. So that's it. Now Rimuru understood, and Veldora knew he had been talkative, so he pretended to be ignorant and whistled as if it was right. Diablo also turned to ask Cheyenne if she did a good job of protecting Lord Rimuru. When the water came to her feet, Cheyenne immediately vented, saying that as long as she appeared, Diablo's presence would be unnecessary. But why did this Diablo return? He had a very important mission. Finally, Diablo also confessed that it was because Veldora had secretly ordered him to return. So Rimuru rushed out to question Veldora for a while. Not only did not keep the secret, but also arbitrarily directed the person who was working, making Veldora scared and sweating like rain. After everyone left, only Diablo and Cheyenne were left. Then Rimuru began to ask Diablo about the plan in Falmouth. He reported that it was still developing well, because he was using the spy strategy inside this kingdom. It turns out, Diablo had restored the bodies of those prisoner meat piles. Indeed, Cheyenne was too cruel. There should be no healing magic in this world that could heal these prisoners. But Diablo had his own method. Don't forget he is also a powerful great demon. The screaming sound from Diablo's carriage also made the Yomu on this side worried. Not knowing whether these prisoners were still intact to go to the Falmouth Kingdom or not. After being restored, the high priest knelt down and kept thanking Diablo-sama. At this time Raisin spoke up, please restore the king, he doesn't need it, but Diblo is a noir water ancestor demon. Everything needs to have proper conditions, he doesn't help anyone anything. Raisin realized this, indeed Diablo is a cunning demon, one of the water ancestor demons, and what he did not expect was that this demon was serving Rimuru. What does this prove? Rimuru looks harmless but is actually a domineering demon lord. It's terrifying. At this point, Raisin knelt down and swore to serve Diablo until his last breath. As long as Diablo healed King Edmaris, the price was too high. Diablo agreed, but did not forget to warn. The price to pay for betrayal is the complete destruction of the Falmouth nation. Hearing this, the bald high priest was terrified and knelt down, constantly flattering Diablo. King Edmaris heard these two had surrendered. He also understood the problem. Clearly, they were not opponents of Tempest and regretted too late. So he also declared, with the title of a king of Falmouth, he would swear to fulfill all of Diablo's purposes. Diablo smirked, then used the charm skill to start controlling these people. Indeed, he never trusts humans no matter what they swear. The chest containing the king's body was brought into the court. The nobles had tried everything but could not restore his body. At this point Raisin stood up and explained, he and another hero had worked together to bring the king's body back here. Everyone was surprised. This is Shogo's body. Why does Raisin claim to be in Shogo's body? Then everyone knew the truth. The entire Falmouth army was defeated. Even the allied forces from the Western Holy Church were all dead. Raisin said that the main reason was that a dragon nearby had awakened and swept everything away. Only Raisin and one other person survived. Just then the Yum appeared. Seeing this a duke jumped out and cursed loudly. Who allowed your black people to enter here? But Raisin spoke up. They are the ones who saved us. Everyone still didn't understand the story. They were all stunned like a goose. Rahim. The high priest stepped forward and explained further. He described the fierceness of the battle between the two sides. Countless people sacrificed. But this fierce battle resurrected Veldora, a powerful storm dragon. It swept away all the soldiers on both sides. But just then, a hero appeared. Diablo nodded when he heard the climax. Rahim said, that was Lord Rimuru of Tempest. He saved us from death by persuading Veldora to stop killing. This part damn made Diablo move to tears. But these nobles still didn't believe. They kept asking in detail. 
Isn't it true that after Veldora absorbed too many magic molecules, all the creatures around him died? Ramuru only crowned himself king of the vast Jura forest. How could he talk to Veldora? These questions made Raisin and Rahim sweat profusely, because if the plan failed, the whole kingdom would be wiped out by Diablo. Raisin reluctantly said that whether self-crowned or not was not important, because Lord Rimuru had conquered the Dryad tribe and asked this tribe to persuade Veldora. These people knew that Dryad was the true owner of the Jura Forest. It seemed that Ray's and Rahim's story had convinced them. At this point, they only blamed themselves for why they went to war with Tempest. If Rimuru could communicate with the storm dragon Veldora, then fighting with Tempest was like seeking death. Just at this tense moment, Yum spoke up, Everyone don't worry. Ramuru himself also helped me defeat the Orc King. He just wants everyone to cooperate happily. Hearing this, the old duke breathed a sigh of relief. So you can negotiate with Rimuru on our behalf, right? Then we need to discuss the changes and we'll tell you later. After that the old man wanted to leave, but Yum didn't allow it. He said that this time Rimuru was really angry because many of his friends sacrificed in the war. Tempest will definitely take revenge. Hearing this the nobles stood still in fear, only the duke cursed loudly in anger, this black man, aren't you respected by that Rimuru? Suddenly Diablo behind started to heat up, about to wipe out these people, feeling the murderous aura. Raisin immediately killed the mad noble, stop, 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 you shut up. At this point everything calmed down again, under the persuasion of Raisin, the nobles began to lean towards the plan to negotiate to see what Tempest's requirements were. At this point, Diablo suddenly appeared, holding a bottle of precious medicine. The soldiers saw him and immediately raised their spears. Who are you? Suddenly appearing without anyone knowing, in an instant, Diablo sprinkled the divine water on the king. The light flashed and King Edmaris returned to normal. This was the effect of the divine water from Tempest with exclusive production technology. Then Diablo took out Rimura's message for the king. He read it aloud in front of everyone. I give you three choices. One is the king abdicates and compensates for the war. Two is to become a colony of Tempest. And the third option, continue the war. Hearing this everyone was scared. Only one week to think. Any solution is equally terrible. People wanted more time to think. But Diablo's impatient temperament did not allow this. Returning to the conversation with Rimuru. The compensation condition that Diablo proposed was 10,000 gold coins, which is about 1 trillion yen when converted to Japanese yen, making Rimuru also unbelievable. According to Diablo's calculations, only this compensation plan would make Falmouth lean the most, because the nobles would not want to become a colony of Tempest, then the king would abdicate and be blamed by the nobles. At this time Raphael advised, should use Yum and let him join the kingdom, with the role of representing the country to communicate with Tempest, that is, in the upcoming civil war, Yum will be pumped by Rimuru for military force and win. Rimuru is still worried that. Neighboring countries may join but Diablo immediately eliminates this worry. Because Duke Fuse and King Gazel have put pressure on these countries, they will not dare to do anything. At this time, seeing Veldora because he was punished by Rimuru and lost the pudding cake he was sitting sulkily, Rimuru immediately returned the cake to him, making Veldora overjoyed. Diablo's report was also completed. Indeed, a great water demon works extremely effectively. Like this, it won't be long before Ramuru unifies the world. The video ends here. Remember to subscribe to watch the next episode as soon as possible.